Jerusalem is a city in Western Asia, on a plateau in the Judean mountains between the Mediterranean and the Dead Sea. It is one of the oldest cities in the world, and is considered holy to the three major Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Both Israel and the Palestinian Authority claim Jerusalem as their capital, as Israel maintains its primary governmental institutions there and the state of Palestine ultimately foresees it as its seat of power. Neither claim, however, is widely recognized internationally. Throughout its long history, Jerusalem has been destroyed at least twice, besieged 23 times, captured and recaptured 44 times, and attacked 52 times. The part of Jerusalem called the City of David shows first signs of settlement in the 4th millennium BCE, in the shape of encampments of nomadic shepherds. In the Canaanite period, Jerusalem was named as Jerusalem on ancient Egyptian tablets, probably meaning, City of Shalom, after a Canaanite deity. During the Israelite period, significant construction activity in Jerusalem began in the 9th century BCE, and in the 8th century BCE the city developed into the religious and administrative center of the Kingdom of Judah. In 1538, the city walls were rebuilt for a last time around Jerusalem under Suleiman the Magnificent. Today those walls define the old city, which has been traditionally divided into four quarters, known since the early 19th century as the Armenian, Christian, Jewish, and Muslim quarters. The old city became a World Heritage Site in 1981, and is on the list of World Heritage in Danger. Since 1860 Jerusalem has grown far beyond the old city's boundaries. In 2015, Jerusalem had a population of some 850,000 residents, comprising approximately 200,000 secular Jewish Israelis, 350,000 Haredi Jews and 300,000 Palestinians. In 2016, the population was 882,700, of which Jews comprised 536,600, Muslims 319,800, Christians 15,800, and 10,300 in classified. According to the Bible, King David conquered the city from the Jebusites and established it as the capital of the United Kingdom of Israel, and his son, King Solomon, commissioned the building of the first temple. Modern scholars argue that Jews branched out of the Canaanite peoples and culture through the development of a distinct monolatrous, and later monotheistic, religion centered on El, Yahweh, these foundational events, straddling the dawn of the first millennium BCE, assumed central symbolic importance for the Jewish people. The sobriquet of Holy City was probably attached to Jerusalem in post-exilic times. The holiness of Jerusalem in Christianity, conserved in the Septuagint which Christians adopted as their own authority, was reinforced by the New Testament account of Jesus' crucifixion there. In Sunni Islam, Jerusalem is the third holiest city, after Mecca and Medina. In Islamic tradition, in 610 CE it became the first Qibla, the focal point for Muslim prayer, and Muhammad made his night journey there ten years later, ascending to heaven where he speaks to God, according to the Quran. As a result, despite having an area of only 0.9 kilometers, the old city is home to many sites of seminal religious importance, among them the Temple Mount with its western wall, Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Outside the old city stands the Garden Tomb. Today, the status of Jerusalem remains one of the core issues in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. During the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, West Jerusalem was among the areas captured and later annexed by Israel while East Jerusalem, including the Old City, was captured and later annexed by Jordan. Israel captured East Jerusalem from Jordan during the 1967 Six-Day War and subsequently annexed it into Jerusalem, together with additional surrounding territory. One of Israel's basic laws, the 1980 Jerusalem Law, refers to Jerusalem as the country's undivided capital. All branches of the Israeli government are located in Jerusalem, including the Knesset, the residences of the Prime Minister and President, and the Supreme Court. The international community rejects the annexation as illegal and treats East Jerusalem as Palestinian territory occupied by Israel. Names, History and Etymology Ancient Egyptian Sources a city called Rusalim in the execration texts of the Middle Kingdom of Egypt is widely, but not universally, identified as Jerusalem. Jerusalem is called Jerusalem in the Amarna letters of Abdi Heba. Etymology. The name, Jerusalem, is variously etymologized to mean, foundation of the god Shalom, the god Shalom was thus the original tutelary deity of the Bronze Age city. 
Shalom or Shalom was the name of the god of dusk in the Canaanite religion, whose name is based on the same root SLM from which the Hebrew word for peace is derived. The name thus offered itself to etymologizations such as the city of peace, abode of peace, dwelling of peace, alternately vision of peace in some Christian authors. The ending ayim indicates the dual, thus leading to the suggestion that the name Yerushalayim refers to the fact that the city initially sat on two hills. Hebrew Bible and Jewish Sources The form Yerushalim or Yerushalayim first appears in the Bible, in the book of Joshua. According to a Midrash, the name is a combination of two names united by God, Yaira and Shalom. Oldest written mention of, Jerusalem. One of the earliest extra-biblical Hebrew writing of the word Jerusalem is dated to the 6th or 7th century BCE and was discovered in Kirbet Beit Leh near Beit Govron in 1961. The inscription states, I am Yahweh thy God, I will accept the cities of Judah and I will redeem Jerusalem, or as other scholars suggest, Yahweh is the God of the whole earth. The mountains of Judah belong to him, to the God of Jerusalem. An older example on papyrus is known from the previous century. In extra-biblical inscriptions, the earliest known example of the Ayim ending was discovered on a column about three kilometers west of ancient Jerusalem, dated to the first century BCE. Jebus, Zion, City of David, an ancient settlement of Jerusalem, founded as early as the Bronze Age on the hill above the Gion Spring, was, according to the Bible named Jebus. Called the Fortress of Zion, it was renamed by David as the City of David, and was known by this name in antiquity. Another name, Zion, initially referred to a distinct part of the city, but later came to signify the city as a whole and to represent the biblical land of Israel. Greek, Roman and Byzantine names. In Greek and Latin the city's name was transliterated Hierosolima, although the city was renamed Aelia Capitolina for part of the Roman period of its history. Salem. The Aramaic Apocryphon of Genesis of the Dead Sea Scrolls equates Jerusalem with the earlier, Salem, said to be the kingdom of Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14. Other early Hebrew sources, early Christian renderings of the verse in Targumim, however, put Salem in northern Israel near Shechem, now Nablus, a city of some importance in early sacred Hebrew writing. Possibly the redactor of the Apocryphon of Genesis wanted to dissociate Melchizedek from the area of Shechem, which at the time was in possession of the Samaritans. However that may be, Later rabbinic sources also equate Salem with Jerusalem, mainly to link Melchizedek to later temple traditions. Arabic names. In Arabic, Jerusalem is most commonly known as, transliterated as Al-Quds in meaning, the holy, or, the holy sanctuary. It is pronounced, il, u, ds, in Palestinian Arabic. Official Israeli government policy mandates that, transliterated as Ursulim, which is the cognate of the Hebrew and English names, be used as the Arabic language name for the city in conjunction with. Palestinian Arab families who hail from this city are often called Qudsi or Makdisi, while Palestinian Muslim Jerusalemites may use these terms as a demonym. History. Given the city's central position in both Jewish nationalism and Palestinian nationalism, the selectivity required to summarize some 5,000 years of inhabited history is often influenced by ideological bias or background. Israeli or Jewish nationalists claim a right to the city based on Jewish indigeneity to the land, particularly their origins in and descent from the Israelites, for whom Jerusalem is their capital, and their yearning for return. In contrast, Palestinian nationalists claim the right to the city based on modern Palestinians' long-standing presence and descent from many different peoples who have settled or lived in the region over the centuries. Both sides claim the history of the city has been politicized by the other in order to strengthen their relative claims to the city, and that this is borne out by the different focuses the different writers place on the various events and eras in the city's history. Overview of Jerusalem's historical periods. Age. Jerusalem proper. For historians and archaeologists, it is Jerusalem's southeast hill, known as the City of David, that is taken into consideration when discussing the age of Jerusalem, since it is the most widely accepted site considered to be where permanent settlement began in ancient Jerusalem. Shuafat, there have been confusing press headings claiming that the age of Jerusalem has to be pushed back, when in fact the respective articles were dealing with findings from nearby Shuafat, a town that historically and archaeologically cannot be equated with Jerusalem. After the Six-Day War in 1967, Shuafat was incorporated into the Jerusalem Municipal District, 
in a move not internationally recognized. Shuafat lies about 6 kilometers north of Jerusalem's oldest historical part, the so-called City of David, and about 5 kilometers north of the walled Old City. What is today Shuafat laid outside the settlement area of its neighbor, Jerusalem, throughout the Bronze Age and until Jerusalem's destruction in 70 CE, and even outside Jerusalem's main Second Temple period northern necropolis. Shuafat is officially described in archaeological terms as being, in the vicinity of Jerusalem. Shuafat has an intermittent settlement history, in part from periods other than Jerusalem's, with 7,000-year-old architectural findings from the Chalcolithic, then from the Second Temple period and the short period between the end of the First Jewish-Roman War and the Bar Kokhba Revolt, being re-inhabited on a smaller scale during the second 4th century CE. Prehistory The southeastern hill, also known as the City of David, is the initial nucleus of historical Jerusalem. There, the Gion Spring attracted shepherds who camped near the water between 6,000 and 7,000 years ago, leaving behind ceramics and flint artifacts during the Chalcolithic, or Copper Age. Ancient period, permanent houses only appeared on the southeastern hill several centuries later, with a small village emerging around 3000-2800 BCE, during the early Bronze Age I or II. Some call the site of this first settlement, the Ophel Ridge. The city's inhabitants at this time were Canaanites, who are believed by scholars to have evolved into the Israelites via the development of a distinct Yahweh-centric monotheistic belief system. The execration texts, which refer to a city called Ruz 3 LMM, variously transcribed as Rusalimum, Yerusalimum, Rosh Raman and the Amarna letters may be the earliest mention of the city. Nadav Naaman argues its fortification as the center of a kingdom dates to around the 18th century BCE. In the late Bronze Age, Jerusalem was the capital of an Egyptian vassal city-state, a modest settlement governing a few outlying villages and pastoral areas, with a small Egyptian garrison and ruled by appointees such as King Abdi Heba. At the time of Seti I and Ramesses II, major construction took place as prosperity increased. Archaeological remains from the ancient Israelite period include the Siloam Tunnel, an aqueduct built by Judahite King Hezekiah and once containing an ancient Hebrew inscription, known as the Siloam Inscription. The so-called Broad Wall, a defensive fortification built in the 8th century BCE, also by Hezekiah. The Silwin Necropolis with the monolith of Silwin and the tomb of the royal steward, which were decorated with monumental Hebrew inscriptions, and the so-called Israelite Tower. Remnants of ancient fortifications, built from large, sturdy rocks with carved cornerstones. A huge water reservoir dating from this period was discovered in 2012 near Robinson's Arch, indicating the existence of a densely built-up quarter across the area west of the Temple Mount during the Kingdom of Judah. The first Temple period ended around 586 BCE, as Nebuchadnezzar's Neo-Babylonian Empire conquered Judah and Jerusalem, and laid waste to Solomon's Temple and the city. Biblical account, this period, when Canaan formed part of the Egyptian Empire, corresponds in biblical accounts to Joshua's invasion, but almost all scholars agree that the book of Joshua holds little historical value for early Israel. In the Bible, Jerusalem is defined as lying within territory allocated to the tribe of Benjamin though occupied by Jebusites. David is said to have conquered these in the siege of Jebus, and transferred his capital from Hebron to Jerusalem which then became the capital of a united kingdom of Israel, and one of its several religious centers. The choice was perhaps dictated by the fact that Jerusalem did not form part of Israel's tribal system, and was thus suited to serve as the center of its confederation. Opinion is divided over whether the so-called large stone structure and the nearby step stone structure may be identified with King David's palace, or dates to a later period. According to the Bible, King David reigned for 40 years and was succeeded by his son Solomon, who built the Holy Temple on Mount Moriah. Solomon's temple, went on to play a pivotal role in Jewish religion as the repository of the Ark of the Covenant. On Solomon's death, ten of the northern tribes of Israel broke with the united monarchy to form their own nation, with its kings, prophets, priests, traditions relating to religion, capitals and temples in northern Israel. The southern tribes, together with the Aaronid priesthood, remained in Jerusalem, with the city becoming the capital of the Kingdom of Judah. When the Assyrians conquered the Kingdom of Israel in 722 BCE, Jerusalem was strengthened by a great influx of refugees from the Northern Kingdom. Classical Antiquity In 538 BCE, 
the Persian king Cyrus the Great invited the Jews of Babylon to return to Judah to rebuild the temple. Construction of the second temple was completed in 516 BCE, during the reign of Darius the Great, 70 years after the destruction of the first temple. Sometime soon after 485 BCE Jerusalem was besieged, conquered and largely destroyed by a coalition of neighboring states. In about 445 BCE, King Artaxerxes I of Persia issued a decree allowing the city to be rebuilt. Jerusalem resumed its role as capital of Judah and center of Jewish worship. Many Jewish tombs from the Second Temple period have been rediscovered in Jerusalem. One example, discovered north of the Old City, contains human remains in an 1st century CE ossuary decorated with the Aramaic inscription, Simon the Temple Builder. The tomb of Abba, also located north of the Old City, bears an Aramaic inscription with Paleo-Hebrew letters reading, I, Abba, son of the priest Elaz, son of Aaron the High, Abba, the oppressed and the persecuted, who was born in Jerusalem, and went into exile into Babylonia and brought Mattathi, son of Judd, and buried him in a cave which I bought by deed. The tomb of Bnei Hazir located in Kidron Valley is decorated by monumental Doric columns and Hebrew inscription, identifying it as the burial site of Second Temple priests. The tombs of the Sanhedrin, an underground complex of 63 rock-cut tombs, is located in a public park in the northern Jerusalem neighborhood of Sanhedria. These tombs, probably reserved for members of the Sanhedrin and inscribed by ancient Hebrew and Aramaic writings, are dated to between 100 BCE and 100 CE. When Alexander the Great conquered the Persian Empire, Jerusalem and Judea came under Macedonian control, eventually falling to the Ptolemaic dynasty under Ptolemy I in 198 BCE. Ptolemy V Epiphanes lost Jerusalem and Judea to the Seleucids under Antiochus III. The Seleucid attempt to recast Jerusalem as a Hellenized city-state came to a head in 168 BCE with the successful Maccabean revolt of Mattathias and his five sons against Antiochus IV Epiphanes, and their establishment of the Hasmonean Kingdom in 152 BCE with Jerusalem as its capital. In 63 BCE, Pompey the Great intervened in a struggle for the Hasmonean throne and captured Jerusalem, extending the influence of the Roman Republic over Judea. Following a short invasion by Parthians, backing the rival Hasmonean rulers, Judea became a scene of struggle between pro-Roman and pro-Parthian forces, eventually leading to the emergence of an Edomite named Herod. As Rome became stronger, it installed Herod as a Jewish client king. Herod the Great, as he was known, devoted himself to developing and beautifying the city. He built walls, towers and palaces, and expanded the Temple Mount, buttressing the courtyard with blocks of stone weighing up to 100 tons. Under Herod, the area of the Temple Mount doubled in size. Shortly after Herod's death, in 6 CE Judea came under direct Roman rule as the Judea province, although the Herodian dynasty through Agrippa II remained client kings of neighboring territories until 96 CE. Roman rule over Jerusalem and the region was challenged in the First Jewish-Roman War, which ended with a Roman victory. The second temple was destroyed in 70 CE, and the entire city was destroyed in the war. The contemporary Jewish historian Josephus wrote that the city was so thoroughly razed to the ground by those that demolished it to its foundations, that nothing was left that could ever persuade visitors that it had once been a place of habitation. Roman rule was again challenged during the Bar Kokhba revolt, beginning in 132 CE and suppressed by the Romans in 135 CE. More recent research indicates that the Romans had founded Aelia Capitolina before the outbreak of the revolt, and found no evidence for Bar Kokhba ever managing to hold the city. Following the Bar Kokhba revolt, Emperor Hadrian combined Judea province with neighboring provinces under the new name of Syria Palestina, replacing the name of Judea. The city was renamed Aelia Capitolina, and rebuilt it in the style of a typical Roman town. Jews were prohibited from entering the city on pain of death, except for one day each year, during the holiday of Tisha B'Av. Taken together, these measures essentially, secularized, the city. The ban was maintained until the 7th century, though Christians would soon be granted an exemption. During the 4th century, the Roman Emperor Constantine I ordered the construction of Christian holy sites in the city, including the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Burial remains from the Byzantine period are exclusively Christian, suggesting that the population of Jerusalem in Byzantine times probably consisted only of Christians. In the 5th century, 
the eastern continuation of the Roman Empire, ruled from the recently renamed Constantinople, maintained control of the city. Within the span of a few decades, Jerusalem shifted from Byzantine to Persian rule, then back to Roman Byzantine dominion. Following Sassanid Khosrau II's early 7th century push through Syria, his generals Sharbaraz and Shahin attacked Jerusalem aided by the Jews of Palestina Prima, who had risen up against the Byzantines. In the siege of Jerusalem of 614, after 21 days of relentless siege warfare, Jerusalem was captured. Byzantine chronicles relate that the Sassanids and Jews slaughtered tens of thousands of Christians in the city, many at the Mamilla Pool, and destroyed their monuments and churches, including the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This episode has been the subject of much debate between historians. The conquered city would remain in Sassanid hands for some 15 years until the Byzantine Emperor Heraclius reconquered it in 629. Jerusalem reached a peak in size and population at the end of the Second Temple period, when the city covered two square kilometers and had a population of 200,000. Early Muslim period. Byzantine Jerusalem was conquered by the Arab armies of Umar ibn al-Khattab in 638 CE. Among the first Muslims, it was referred to as Medinat Bayt al-Makdish, a name restricted to the Temple Mount. The rest of the city was called Elia, reflecting the Roman name given the city following the destruction of 70 CE, Elia Capitolina. Later the Temple Mount became known as Al-Haram al-Sharif, the noble sanctuary, while the city around it became known as Bayt al-Makdish, and later still, Al-Quds al-Sharif, the holy, noble. The Islamization of Jerusalem began in the first year AH, when Muslims were instructed to face the city while performing their daily prostrations and, according to Muslim religious tradition, Muhammad's night journey and ascension to heaven took place. After 13 years, the direction of prayer was changed to Mecca. In 638 CE the Islamic Caliphate extended its dominion to Jerusalem. With the Arab conquest, Jews were allowed back into the city. The Rashidun Caliph Umar ibn al-Khattab signed a treaty with Christian Patriarch of Jerusalem Sophronius, assuring him that Jerusalem's Christian holy places and population would be protected under Muslim rule. Christian Arab tradition records that, when led to pray at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, one of the holiest sites for Christians, the Caliph Umar refused to pray in the church so that Muslims would not request conversion of the church to a mosque. He prayed outside the church, where the Mosque of Umar stands to this day, opposite the entrance to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. According to the Gallic Bishop Arkulf, who lived in Jerusalem from 679 to 688, the Mosque of Umar was a rectangular wooden structure built over ruins which could accommodate 3,000 worshippers. When the Arab armies under Umar went to Bayt al-Makdis in 637 CE, they searched for the site of al-Masjid al-Aqsa, the farthest place of prayer, mosque, that was mentioned in the Quran and Hadith according to Islamic beliefs. Contemporary Arabic and Hebrew sources say the site was full of rubbish, and that Arabs and Jews cleaned it. The Umayyad Caliph Abd al-Malik commissioned the construction of a shrine on the Temple Mount, now known as the Dome of the Rock, in the late 7th century. Two of the city's most distinguished Arab citizens of the 10th century were Al-Muqadasa, the geographer, and Al-Tamimi, the physician. Al-Muqadasa writes that Abd al-Malik built the edifice on the Temple Mount in order to compete in grandeur with Jerusalem's monumental churches. Over the next 400 years, Jerusalem's prominence diminished as Arab powers in the region vied for control of the city. Jerusalem was captured in 1073 by the Seljuk Turkish commander Atsiz. After Atsiz was killed, the Seljuk prince Tudish the first granted the city to Artuk Bey, another Seljuk commander. After Artuk's death in 1091 his sons Sokman and Ilghazi governed in the city up to 1098 when the Fatimids recaptured the city. A messianic Karaiti movement to gather in Jerusalem took place at the turn of the millennium, leading to a golden age of Karaiti scholarship there, which was only terminated by the Crusades. Crusader, Ayyubid period. In 1099, the Fatimid ruler expelled the native Christian population before Jerusalem was besieged by the soldiers of the First Crusade. After taking the solidly defended city by assault, the Crusaders massacred most of its Muslim and Jewish inhabitants, and made it the capital of their Kingdom of Jerusalem. The city, which had been virtually emptied, was recolonized by a variegated inflow of Greeks, Bulgarians, Hungarians, Georgians, Armenians, Syrians, Egyptians, 
Nestorians, Maronites, Jacobite Myophysites, Copts and others, to block the return of the surviving Muslims and Jews. The northeastern quarter was repopulated with Eastern Christians from the Transjordan. As a result, by 1099 Jerusalem's population had climbed back to some 30,000. In 1187, the city was wrested from the Crusaders by Saladin who permitted Jews and Muslims to return and settle in the city. Under the terms of surrender, once ransomed, 60,000 Franks were expelled. The Eastern Christian populace was permitted to stay. Under the Ayyubid dynasty of Saladin, a period of huge investment began in the construction of houses, markets, public baths, and pilgrim hostels as well as the establishment of religious endowments. However, for most of the 13th century, Jerusalem declined to the status of a village due to city's fall of strategic value and Ayyubid internecine struggles. From 1229 to 1244, Jerusalem peacefully reverted to Christian control as a result of a 1229 treaty agreed between the crusading Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II and al kamil the Ayyubid Sultan of Egypt, that ended the Sixth Crusade. The Ayyubids retained control of the Muslim holy places, and Arab sources suggest that Frederick was not permitted to restore Jerusalem's fortifications. In 1244, Jerusalem was sacked by the Khwarezmian Tatars, who decimated the city's Christian population and drove out the Jews. The Khwarezmian Tatars were driven out by the Ayyubids in 1247. Mamluk period. From 1260 to 1517, Jerusalem was ruled by the Mamluks. In the wider region and until around 1300, many clashes occurred between the Mamluks on one side, and the Crusaders and the Mongols, on the other side. The area also suffered from many earthquakes and Black Plague, when Nachmanides visited in 1267 he found only two Jewish families, in a population of 2,000, 300 of whom were Christians, in the city. The well-known and far-traveled lexicographer Feruzabadi spent 10 years in Jerusalem. Ottoman period, 16th-19th centuries. In 1517, Jerusalem and environs fell to the Ottoman Turks, who generally remained in control until 1917. Jerusalem enjoyed a prosperous period of renewal and peace under Suleiman the Magnificent, including the rebuilding of magnificent walls around the old city. Throughout much of Ottoman rule, Jerusalem remained a provincial, if religiously important center, and did not straddle the main trade route between Damascus and Cairo. The English reference book Modern History or the Present State of All Nations, written in 1744, stated that, Jerusalem is still reckoned the capital city of Palestine, though much fallen from its ancient grandeur. The Ottomans brought many innovations. Modern postal systems run by the various consulates and regular stagecoach and carriage services were among the first signs of modernization in the city. In the mid-19th century, the Ottomans constructed the first paved road from Jaffa to Jerusalem, and by 1892 the railroad had reached the city. With the annexation of Jerusalem by Muhammad Ali of Egypt in 1831, foreign missions and consulates began to establish a foothold in the city. In 1836, Ibrahim Pasha allowed Jerusalem's Jewish residents to restore four major synagogues, among them the Herva. In the countrywide peasants' revolt, Qasim al-Ahmad led his forces from Nablus and attacked Jerusalem, aided by the Abu Ghosh clan, and entered the city on 31 May 1834. The Christians and Jews of Jerusalem were subjected to attacks, Ibrahim's Egyptian army routed Qasim's forces in Jerusalem the following month. Ottoman rule was reinstated in 1840, but many Egyptian Muslims remained in Jerusalem and Jews from Algiers and North Africa began to settle in the city in growing numbers. In the 1840s and 1850s, the international powers began a tug of war in Palestine as they sought to extend their protection over the region's religious minorities, a struggle carried out mainly through consular representatives in Jerusalem. According to the Prussian consul, the population in 1845 was 16,410, with 7,120 Jews, 5,000 Muslims, 3,390 Christians, 800 Turkish soldiers and 100 Europeans. The volume of Christian pilgrims increased under the Ottomans, doubling the city's population around Easter time. In the 1860s, new neighborhoods began to develop outside the old city walls to house pilgrims and relieve the intense overcrowding and poor sanitation inside the city. The Russian compound and Mishkanat Shah Ananam were founded in 1860, followed by many others that included Mahane Israel, Nahalat Shiva, German Colony, Beit David, Maya Sharim, 
Shimon Hazadik, Beit Yaakov, Abu Tor, American Swedish Colony, Yamin Moshe, and Mamilla, Wadi al Joes around the turn of the century. In 1867 an American missionary reports an estimated population of Jerusalem of, above, 15,000, with 4,000 to 5,000 Jews and 6,000 Muslims. Every year there were 5,000 to 6,000 Russian Christian pilgrims. In 1872 Jerusalem became the center of a special administrative district, independent of the Syria Vilayet and under the direct authority of Istanbul called the Mutasara Fate of Jerusalem. The great number of Christian orphans resulting from the 1860 civil war in Mount Lebanon and the Damascus massacre led in the same year to the opening of the German Protestant Syrian Orphanage, better known as the Schneller Orphanage after its founder. Until the 1880s there were no formal Jewish orphanages in Jerusalem, as families generally took care of each other. In 1881 the Diskin Orphanage was founded in Jerusalem with the arrival of Jewish children orphaned by a Russian pogrom. Other orphanages founded in Jerusalem at the beginning of the 20th century were Zion Blumenthal Orphanage and General Israel Orphans Home for Girls. British Mandate, 1917-1948. In 1917 after the Battle of Jerusalem, the British Army, led by General Edmund Allenby, captured the city. In 1922, the League of Nations at the Conference of Lausanne entrusted the United Kingdom to administer Palestine, neighboring Transjordan, and Iraq beyond it. The British had to deal with a conflicting demand that was rooted in Ottoman rule. Agreements for the supply of water, electricity, and the construction of a tramway system, all under concessions granted by the Ottoman authorities, had been signed by the city of Jerusalem and a Greek citizen, Euripides Mavromidis, on 27 January 1914. Work under these concessions had not begun and, by the end of the war the British occupying forces refused to recognize their validity. Mavromidis claimed that his concessions overlapped with the Auja concession that the government had awarded to Rutenberg in 1921 and that he had been deprived of his legal rights. The Mavromidis concession, in effect despite earlier British attempts to abolish it, covered Jerusalem and other localities within a radius of 20 kilometers around the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. From 1922 to 1948 the total population of the city rose from 52,000 to 165,000, comprised two-thirds of Jews and one-third of Arabs. Relations between Arab Christians and Muslims and the growing Jewish population in Jerusalem deteriorated, resulting in recurring unrest. In Jerusalem, in particular, Arab riots occurred in 1920 and in 1929. Under the British, new garden suburbs were built in the western and northern parts of the city and institutions of higher learning such as the Hebrew University were founded. Divided City, Jordanian and Israeli Rule, 1948-1967. As the British mandate for Palestine was expiring, the 1947 UN Partition Plan recommended the creation of a special international regime in the city of Jerusalem, constituting it as a corpus separatum under the administration of the UN. The international regime was to remain in force for a period of 10 years, whereupon a referendum was to be held in which the residents were to decide the future regime of their city. However, this plan was not implemented, as the 1948 war erupted, while the British withdrew from Palestine and Israel declared its independence. In contradiction to the partition plan, which envisioned a city separated from the Arab state and the Jewish state, Israel took control of the area which later would become West Jerusalem, along with major parts of the Arab territory allotted to the future Arab state. Jordan took control of East Jerusalem, along with the West Bank. The war led to displacement of Arab and Jewish populations in the city. The 1,500 residents of the Jewish quarter of the Old City were expelled and a few hundred taken prisoner when the Arab Legion captured the quarter on 28 May. Arab residents of Kataman, Talbia, and the German colony were driven from their homes. By the time of the armistice that ended active fighting, Israel had control of 12 of Jerusalem's 15 Arab residential quarters. An estimated minimum of 30,000 people had become refugees. The War of 1948 resulted in the division of Jerusalem, so that the old walled city lay entirely on the Jordanian side of the line. A no-man's land between East and West Jerusalem came into being in November 1948. Moshe Dayan, commander of the Israeli forces in Jerusalem, met with his Jordanian counterpart Abdullah El Tel in a deserted house in Jerusalem's Mushrara neighborhood and marked out their respective positions. Israel's position in red and Jordan's in green. This rough map, 
which was not meant as an official one, became the final line in the 1949 armistice agreements, which divided the city and left Mount Scopus as an Israeli exclave inside East Jerusalem. Barbed wire and concrete barriers ran down the center of the city, passing close by Jaffa Gate on the western side of the Old Walled City, and a crossing point was established at Mandelbaum Gate slightly to the north of the Old Walled City. Military skirmishes frequently threatened the ceasefire. After the establishment of the State of Israel, Jerusalem was declared its capital city. Jordan formally annexed East Jerusalem in 1950, subjecting it to Jordanian law, and in 1953 declared it the second capital of Jordan. Only the United Kingdom and Pakistan formally recognized such annexation, which, in regard to Jerusalem, was on a de facto basis. Some scholars argue that the view that Pakistan recognized Jordan's annexation is dubious. After 1948, since the old walled city in its entirety was to the east of the armistice line, Jordan was able to take control of all the holy places therein. While Muslim holy sites were maintained and renovated, contrary to the terms of the armistice agreement, Jews were denied access to Jewish holy sites, many of which were destroyed or desecrated. Jordan allowed only very limited access to Christian holy sites, and restrictions were imposed on the Christian population that led many to leave the city. Of the 58 synagogues in the Old City, half were either razed or converted to stables and hen houses over the course of the next 19 years, including the Herva and the Tiferet Yisrael Synagogue. The 3,000-year-old Mount of Olives Jewish Cemetery was desecrated, with gravestones used to build roads, latrines and Jordanian army fortifications. 38,000 graves in the Jewish cemetery were destroyed, and Jews were forbidden from being buried there. The Western Wall was transformed into an exclusively Muslim holy site associated with al-Barak. Israeli authorities neglected to protect the tombs in the Muslim Mamilla Cemetery in West Jerusalem, which contains the remains of figures from the early Islamic period, facilitating the creation of a parking lot and public lavatories in 1964. Many other historic and religiously significant buildings were demolished and replaced by modern structures during the Jordanian occupation. During this period, the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque underwent major renovations. During the 1948 war, the Jewish residents of Eastern Jerusalem were expelled by Jordan's Arab Legion. Jordan allowed Arab-Palestinian refugees from the war to settle in the vacated Jewish quarter, which became known as Harat al-Sharif. In 1966 the Jordanian authorities relocated 500 of them to the Shu'afat refugee camp as part of plans to turn the Jewish quarter into a public park. Israeli rule, 1967 present. In 1967, despite Israeli pleas that Jordan remain neutral during the Six-Day War, Jordan, which had concluded a defense agreement with Egypt on 30 May 1967, attacked Israeli-held West Jerusalem on the war's second day. After hand-to-hand -hand fighting between Israeli and Jordanian soldiers on the Temple Mount, the Israel Defense Forces captured East Jerusalem, along with the entire West Bank. On 27 June 1967, three weeks after the war ended, in the reunification of Jerusalem, Israel extended its law and jurisdiction to East Jerusalem, including the city's Christian and Muslim holy sites, along with some nearby West Bank territory which comprised 28 Palestinian villages, incorporating it into the Jerusalem municipality, although it carefully avoided using the term annexation. On 10 July, Foreign Minister Abba Eben explained to the UN Secretary General, the term, annexation, which was used by supporters of the vote is not accurate. The steps that were taken, by Israel, relate to the integration of Jerusalem in administrative and municipal areas, and served as a legal basis for the protection of the holy places of Jerusalem. Israel conducted a census of Arab residents in the areas annexed. Residents were given permanent residency status and the option of applying for Israeli citizenship. Since 1967, new Jewish residential areas have mushroomed in the eastern sector, while no new Palestinian neighborhoods have been created. Jewish and Christian access to the holy sites inside the Old Walled City was restored. Israel left the Temple Mount under the jurisdiction of an Islamic WAQF, but opened the Western Wall to Jewish access. The Moroccan Quarter, which was located adjacent to the Western Wall, was evacuated and raised to make way for a plaza for those visiting the wall. On 18 April 1968, an expropriation order by the Israeli Ministry of Finance more than doubled the size of the Jewish Quarter, 
evicting its Arab residents and seizing over 700 buildings of which 105 belonged to Jewish inhabitants prior to the Jordanian occupation of the city. The order designated these areas for public use, but they were intended for Jews alone. The government offered 200 Jordanian dinars to each displaced Arab family. After the Six-Day War the population of Jerusalem increased by 196 percent. The Jewish population grew by 155 percent, while the Arab population grew by 314 percent. The proportion of the Jewish population fell from 74 percent in 1967 to 72 percent in 1980, to 68 percent in 2000, and to 64 percent in 2010. Israeli Agriculture Minister Ariel Sharon proposed building a ring of Jewish neighborhoods around the city's eastern edges. The plan was intended to make East Jerusalem more Jewish and prevent it from becoming part of an urban Palestinian bloc stretching from Bethlehem to Ramallah. On 2 October 1977, the Israeli cabinet approved the plan, and seven neighborhoods were subsequently built on the city's eastern edges. They became known as the Ring Neighborhoods. Other Jewish neighborhoods were built within East Jerusalem, and Israeli Jews also settled in Arab neighborhoods. The annexation of East Jerusalem was met with international criticism. The Israeli Foreign Ministry disputes that the annexation of Jerusalem was a violation of international law. The final status of Jerusalem has been one of the most important areas of discord between Palestinian and Israeli negotiators for peace. Areas of discord have included whether the Palestinian flag can be raised over areas of Palestinian custodianship and the specificity of Israeli and Palestinian territorial borders.
Pas de soleil, pas de soleil, pas de soleil.